Hi, this is Marcielle Presents Good News, and I'm your host, Marcielle Brandler, and my guest today is Mirka Kopakova, and Mirka has been a translator of English literature and children for children and adults, and she also translates psychology and spiritual books. She lives in Prague in the Czech Republic, and that's where we met. And um, I traveled with Drs. James Reagan, director of the USC Professional Writing Program, to Prague to study poetry. And he and his wife and children and I flew together. I knew him because I had read my poetry and he talked me into becoming his student at USC, where I earned my MA in professional writing. Um, and so, the way I met Mirka is in the class, I overheard her mumbling while during the lecture, little witty things. And I thought, who is this girl? And then we started talking and we became great friends. So welcome, Mirka. It's so great to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel. Thank you for inviting me to this <laughs> talk. I really enjoyed the talks we've been having about spiritual development lately over the past few weeks. We've sort of gotten into this time it's for the public, but I really enjoy just the two of us talking about it. It's, and we get yeah, really deep. I mean, Mirka is a very deep person. And first, I wanted to ask you, uh, what what caused you to want to study poetry when I met you in 1996? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, I'm a cancer sign, I'm a romantic, and I was studying uh, translation, or I mean, more likely literature, <laughs> literature at that time, English literature, and it, I just had this notion of translating novels and poems and, and theater plays, and I, of course, I have been translating novels, as it turned out, and I've translated some poetry even as well, didn't get to the drama, or I haven't so, as yet, but uh, I haven't written that many poems myself. It's really just for translation purposes. But I, I really value the the self-expression because there's great energy in it. So if you know how to write a song, if you know how to draw a picture or or write a poem, it's like a, it's like a basic human need to self-express. So so yeah, poetry is great. I just don't do it as much as I should probably. I love that. It's a basic human need. That's so true. And um, what are your other interests besides what we're going to talk about and also poetry what are some other things uh well it may sound all over the place but it kind of makes sense to me altogether but uh like in addition to languages and 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 translating i've also done some dancing like irish dancing for a long time and and a little bit of latin american dancing but i also did martial arts i did kung fu tai chi and and i even did fencing a little bit and a, like a year of horse riding even so wow. and i love the water so i enjoy swimming i enjoyed uh, swimming with my daughter when from when she was very young from when she was a baby so um various interests really that's really cool and then you got into uh qigong and um, what what got you into that? Because that's it's not yoga. It's very specific. No, it's not. But uh, you see, I was kind of looking for spiritual development earlier on, and I couldn't find anything. Like when I was in university, I found kung fu and and tai chi, and we even did a little bit of qigong. But it was more about movement because we had a Chinese master who didn't speak too much Czech, so he couldn't explain to us all the energy work behind it. And so much later, uh, in 2015, when I was a very tired single mother <laughs> and I was looking for something, some way to sort of regain my energy, someone suggested to me, why don't you do energy work like Qigong? And I'm like, yeah, I've actually done a little Qigong. So I started searching and like a month or two later, I was in the first level course and then I took the second level course and, and I got into this Jung Yuan Qigong school, which is great because... Uh, People usually start uh, develop like for the purpose of health purposes, unless they want to go into spiritual development like I did. But uh, then they get, gradually get to it. The more the more you realize it helps your health, the more you want to practice and and find out like you know develop other senses and understand the world more in depth. So, but init initially I started because I was tired. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't know that. That is but... so cool. And you you. I asked you how you how Qigong you how you use it 
to change the negative to, into a positive because that's kind of what this show is about. Right, I know, yeah. And you talked about uh, you send light into the earth. Can you explain more about that? Well, that's that's uh, that's just one of many things that we've done with our master. I think the turning the bad into good. Maybe I'd go a little further than that. Uh, like uh, with this uh, this junior and chicken school has uh the current uh, grandmaster is is Shumin Tang and he uh he has lectures and during the covid times he started to have many more online lectures before it used to be like we'd go to a retreat or there would be seminars but uh there's uh like for many people probably covid started a lot more online events so uh so uh because he had st students in many countries around the world he started telling them how to like if they don't have access to medical care how they can help themselves at home you know with various uh, like alternative medicine methods and things like that and and also giving lectures on on qigong and on meditation and i think it very much supported people in the different countries uh like emotionally in the difficult times when we were on lockdown and everything. And one of the things he did was uh, sending light into the earth. But at that time, it was, uh, of course, the COVID time. So it was more to heal the lungs, so so to say, as if of the entire uh, of the entire earth. But also everybody, like all of, you know, healing all the, all the sick people at once. So we would like have a session and all of us would imagine a ball of, uh, not of energy, but like uh, the earth this time between our hands. And we'd be like holding it and we'd be saying the mantra Ming, which means light. And, and we'd be sending light into the earth and kind of trying to energetically help to make sure that uh, as many people heal as possible from, from COVID. And and I remember that during the during the uh, well now because of the war in Ukraine, uh, we once did that uh, in my course as well with my students, uh, just because the war, just sending the light so that people would. I mean, because everybody has light in them, but a lot of people behave like they don't see their own light, like they don't know that they're actually good deep inside. It's, a lot of people mask it with a lot of bad deeds. So what I would kind of hope and what I actually myself pray for every evening and every morning is that uh, people would awaken the light in them and would not hurt one another. Bravo. So, wow. Yeah. That touches my heart. That's so beautiful. And I remember a saying that you told me, when there is a catastrophe, look for the helpers. And, you know, we're seeing that, yeah. you know, everywhere around us that you know, there's something horrible that happens, but then people come out to help and and then their friends and their relatives and it's expanding. So uh, the the good is expanding. And um, yeah, and I I see you with a, a, a near a 3000 year old tree. Tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, this uh, this summer was the first time I actually got to go to China for a meditation retreat with Master Shumintang uh, in Shaolin, which is a place I kind of dreamt about going to 25 years ago when I was studying uh, Kung Fu. I thought I was going to go there to study Kung Fu with the master I had at that, at that time. But now this time I actually got to go there uh, for a meditation retreat uh, in, near the Shaolin Monastery. So uh, it was a, a huge experience. Oh, we did um, well a full ten days, completely without food, and and some extra time, like just preparing for it, meditating. Because if you don't have the stress, you can. I mean, it's actually doable, no problem. If you if you're in a strong energetic place and you don't, you know, instead of work, you're just meditating and whatever. It's it's very easily done. But uh, it's also the area has many interesting monasteries and and and. Uh, like other other places of energy and there are old trees especially around the monasteries so they might be like three or some in some places even four or four and a half years old a thousand years old and uh one of the main exercises in jungyeon qigong and i think it's probably in many qigong styles is standing like a tree or some in some, some place they call it standing like a pole but that kind of loses sense a little but standing like a tree of the big tree exercise it means that you imagine you're absorbing energy from the from the ground and from uh, from the sky, which the which the trees do. They just absorb, 
you know, all nutrients and water and sun and everything, and they create what they need inside. And, and we can kind of do it as well. And we can also, in meditation, we can connect to the tree and create what our master calls the uh, like um, quantum entanglement of the minds. So you kind of, basically you build a connection with the tree and the tree starts sending you images. So uh, it may give you, a, if you, you know, if you ask repeatedly, please tell me how to live to a long age, how to be healthy how to learn how to absorb energy properly or how to perform this exercise properly. You can kind of form a relationship with a tree and it starts helping you. So uh, yeah, if you, if you practice uh, for a long, you know, for a long time, you can kind of connect to nature in this way. And they've done <clears throat> research now where they've proven, <clears throat> excuse me, that plants actually communicate with each yeah. other in a forest and, and they even have language and mm -hmm. even these um, microscopic creatures that have the cilia coming out, that mm -hmm. that's a form of communication. And of course, the, you know, the people at the vanguard, at the cutting edge, are the ones who know these things. And if you tell your friends or people who, who don't really, you know, aren't very open minded, they're going to think you're crazy. But it's like, well, we're not worried about those people. They, you know, they have their reality and we all have our limitations, but there are people who will hear us and who will be interested and trust that, that uh, these, you know, cause there are things like Shakespeare said, you know, there, there are things beyond what you and I can see in our limited lives. I think that's really uh, amazing. And and then uh, I also have a photograph of you practicing in the park. So yeah. that's really beautiful. And then yeah. uh, you're at uh, at the Damo statue. Tell mm -hmm. me about that statue. I think it's a Buddha, right? Uh, no, Damo is one of the is uh, is a patriarch in the in the system, and and uh, he is original. He was originally from uh, from India, I think. I didn't I didn't <laughs> didn't really prepare this in detail, but uh, but uh, he uh, got to China, and he was already uh, like a big uh, big teacher. But somehow in China, the emperor did not really receive him as well as he should have. Damo came to him and he wanted uh, he wanted uh, to be accepted as an equal. So he took off one of his sandals and put it on his on his head. And uh, the the emperor asked what that meant, and he said, "Well, the same as as above, so below, basically." So uh, so like he wanted to be treated as an equal, and and the emperor didn't really treat him that way. So he moved on. He went to the Shaolin monastery. Uh, there was a monastery already at that time. Uh, but the monks somehow didn't really understand him much either. So he got angry and he went uh, to a nearby mountain and meditated in a in, in a very very small cave there for nine years. So uh, that's why oh. and his statue there is on top of the mountain, slightly above the cave. So oh, and it's oh. it's one of the places. Uh, it's relatively near where we had the retreat. So a lot of the students uh, went up like every morning before meditation. They just ran up the mountain. And also the Shaolin, uh, the uh, the practitioner, the kung fu practitioners who from the school from the Shaolin school there, they also run there as their morning routine. But it's like a thousand steps, so wow. I had a hard time getting up. But uh, <laughs> but like, and then then you meet these kids who just you know run up and down. <laughs> but yeah, it's a you... it's a very strong place. It's it's um yeah, it's just sitting near that cave and meditating for a while is is really impressive. And the mountains around the area are just beautiful. So so I even used the photograph from up near the Damo statue, of, a photograph of the valley for uh, one of my Facebook groups for the for the English group because uh it's just such a uh, such a beautiful view and it's early morning of course so the light is wonderful and everything that is so, so it's a great place to meditate and can you tell us a little bit more about what qigong is for lay people who you know i mean i'm thinking it's sort of like yoga but mm -hmm. beyond yoga i guess well, it's um, actually I heard uh, one of uh, one of master's students who lived. Uh, she, there's a there's a Russian lady, very, a very young lady who ended up living in Shaolin. Actually, she stayed in China, 
and she learns from the monks there and she works as a guide at the Shaolin monastery and and uh, it's interesting to learn some things from her as well so and she recently said that um that um like you get people who say i want to learn the muscle and tendon classic or something for example like to work to make sure that that uh that the body is healthier and she's like she can see that some people have done yoga or they've done tai chi or something and they've already worked through some of the some of the things in their in their body that they want to achieve with this next thing so uh basically they overlap all of these all of these approaches i mean with yoga you can actually go very deep uh spiritually with yoga as well it just depends on how deeply the teacher teaches it but and it also depends on how deep you want to go so there are like common people who you know are not like you know not university educated or anything and they just come to qigong because they uh, they need uh, they have some physical ailment that they need help with and then they kind of work through it and then but the energy and the information starts working in the body so the person starts changing and developing and they want to know more gradually so so then they you know they initially come for just level one to help with uh, with health but uh, a lot of the time people get like pulled into into developing further because they just can't help it really <laughs> it's interesting hey right. yeah because you once you you fall in love with something you want to go deeper and can you explain to us what you do and you're you're located in prague in the czech republic mm -hmm. but i think you do some things online too right i, I mainly do uh, mainly teach online i just started doing some live events now but uh, but i started online because a lot of the students i have well, the thing is, uh, the thing is, I'm uh, officially I'm a level one instructor, so I can issue a certificate for the Jungian school for people who study with me to uh, the le the first level exercises. But uh, so I got this certificate, and I was I was thinking about teaching, and it ended up that a lot of people uh, addressed me who have four who have who have passed four levels like me. And they uh, they wanted something more, something interesting. So I ended up practicing, rehearsing all of the four level exercises uh, with them and looking for other new interesting things like uh, other kinds of energy healing or or like other kinds of making the body healthier or feel other, you know, other techniques so so i'm i'm trying to and i add like like seasonal stuff about healing the eyes about cleaning the body because i study herbs as well so i try to put that in and and i'm kind of compiling this uh this uh, richer course for my more advanced students but of course at the beginning you need to sort of work through the energy of the body so uh, once i have beginners we will go through uh like initial stages of qigong and then you know when when the body has cleaned energetically then you can add extra stuff but and, with and the advanced have, i'm already adding extra stuff yeah and we're gonna have your longer bio and how to reach you in the program notes um mm -hmm. but for for our viewers <clears throat> and people who might be listening in their cars or wherever they mm -hmm. are on the podcast what is a, a shortcut like a a way to reach you um for for viewers and listeners uh well i uh i um created a a, a simple address that would be understandable for uh, for english speakers it's your inner dial at gmail.com so your, you will put that your, under your wild your your inner dial as in like your inner oh, inner inner dial your, 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 your inner yeah. inner mm -hmm. Dao.com yeah. uh, at gmail.com at gmail.com because it's an email address. Your yeah. inner or, Dao at gmail.com. Yes, That's or you can is. find me on Facebook uh, under Mirka Kopitsova, or uh, there's an English group which is called The Dao Within. So, and also, do you have a message for people in Czech? Or do you want to just make this all English? <laughs> uh, we can just, you can just leave it English. And and uh, it's, I mean, a lot of Czech people understand English to to quite yeah. an extent. So, so I suppose that's, uh, that's all right. And there'll, there'll be, there'll be stuff <clears throat> underneath. Okay. If, you, if you just have it in writing, that's fine enough. <clears throat> well, thank you so much, Mirka Kopakova. This has been <laughs> wonderful. And you, you turned me on to a book uh -huh. about Qigong. 
what was uh -huh. the name of that book? I forget it. Um, I think that the, the the first stage stage of ascent because there are the 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 publicly co taught courses are level one, level two, level three, and then master teaches level four. So there are books about it. So it's Chung Yuan Chi Kung. The first stage of ascent is the book to start with. It's the, the first level one Chi Kung. Stage Qigong, the first stage of ascent. Uh huh. Okay. So yes. um, people who are listening, that's a way to find out. And of course, you're going to see there's a lot of videos on Qigong and you can right. visit Mirka. So uh, I'm going to say thank you to Mirka. I mean, it's just so beautiful to know that you're moving in this realm and, and it's a realm I'm interested in too. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. And uh, we'll say goodbye um, thank you. <laughs> to our lovely Mirka. This is Marcel Brandler. I'm your host with Marcel Presents. <laughs>